you take the blue pill, the story ends, you wake up in your bed, and you believe whatever you want to believe. You take the red pill, you stay in Wonderland, and I show you how deep the rabbit hole goes. A lot of people have asked me somewhat rhetorically why I believe that people are attracted to antinatalism, and I've answered um, in my in the best way that I can, uh, within the limitations of um, my, my ability to judge anyone else's motives, <clears throat> that I believe that it's uh, an interesting and somewhat morbid quest for certainty. The certainties that antinatalism offers you aren't exactly pleasant ones, but they're certainties. And there are worse certainties to actually believe in, i.e. some sort of cosmic horror, some sort of Lovecraftian universe, where reality itself is hellish, where um, the only thing that really makes any sense is oblivion and um, deliberate self-delusion and ignorance or deliberate deliberately ignoring the truth. Don't go looking for things that you don't really want to find. Well, okay, I, I understand that logic, and a lot of people actually do that. A lot of people live their lives sort of la, 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 in a way we all do, including myself. Um, we don't, there are truths out there that we don't want to know. I understand that. But the thing is, um, I don't want to swap that uh, deliberate self-deception for another one, because a lot of the arguments that I've seen to counter my arguments are, look, this is the best evidence that we have to do what we're going to do. To we know we understand your objection to, to to our point of view that axioms are not truth or whatever, but it's the best we can reasonably do. It's the best that we can reasonably come to as human beings. Um, to me, that doesn't make the facts facts any more factual. It that that objection doesn't automatically or magically turn an axiom into a fact. It, I understand the objection to it, because again, if you live your life according to what apparently I'm propounding, which I'm actually not propounding, but that's another story, if you actually live your life in a state of complete doubt all the time, every second of every day, you're that proverbial deer caught in the headlights. You, you, you're paralyzed. You don't know what to do. Um, <clears throat> I'm not advocating that. In spite of what some people might think, I'm not advocating that. I'm advocating that we live in the world, that we move on in the world, that we do things in the world, that we assume that it's as real as it looks. But that's not the same thing as saying that this is exactly the way things are. And I do not accept the argument that says um, that we have to accept certain things as givens in order to act in this world. No, we don't. Or at least we have to accept them as givens, but we have to understand that we're accepting them as givens. They're not actual hard facts. Um, that's skepticism, isn't it? Uh, it looks as though this around me, this matrix that I'm in, is real. Plato's cave looked real for the people who lived in it, but it wasn't real because there was somebody watching and seeing and, and had different points of reference than the people inside the cave. <clears throat> so I'm not actually saying um, that we should uh, that we should somehow seize up and not do anything, and quite the opposite, actually, which is why I brought up things like the Bhagavad Gita and the, the, uh, the despondency of Arjuna. He, ar he arrived at that, uh, that, that second, and he said, the universe is crazy, I can't deal with it, and Krishna, of course, uh, through his f uh, philosophy of existence, life, the universe, and everything, taught Arjuna how to cope with that fact. Now, I understand that people might object to the, my use of religious imagery here. I don't care, because I don't even think that it actually that the Gita has to be read religiously at all. In fact, I think that having certain religious biases when you approach it actually kind of um, pollutes it, I suppose. That's just my way of looking at it. I'm not going to tell an observant Hindu how to see their own uh, holy literature. But um, to me, the divinity thing actually uh, goes against the philosophy. But that's, again, that's another story. What do you do about the fact that everything is so completely uncertain? If everything is completely uncertain, and I accept the fact that it is, for the record, you don't make things any more certain by simply saying they are certain. You don't make facts any more factual by simply blindly insisting that they are facts. And I'm not advocating that we do that either, but it looks to me as though the antinatalist argument is based upon that a priori assumption, that we have to make certain assumptions. But again, I'm pointing out the pratfalls of that 
if you do actually um, make that assumption, you end up in blind alleys, cul-de-sacs, dead ends, like antinatalism. Uh, logic ultimately fails because logic itself is built upon axioms. You have to avoid those sorts of pratfalls by understanding the limitations of your tools. But if you're frightened by that kind of certainty, um, if you don't really want to know how deep the rabbit hole goes, you'd better take this pill. Thank you.